Welcome to the Deadly Addiction channel. This is going to be another podcast on sciences or education. It's continuing my mental disorder slash illness group of podcasts. Again, I've said it before, I'm not sure if I'm going to continue doing podcasts on the site and well, on the site on YouTube. And I was thinking about what would I regret not doing. Again, I've said this now several times that I would regret not putting out a, you know, a more group together podcast on individual mental illness slash disorders. So here I am again. Today I'm going to be doing gender dysphoria. Oh, I put the little smoke effect back on. I kind of missed it. <laughs> I'm thinking about things of regret. So there's a little smoke animation coming out of the pipe. Oh, wow. Yeah. Again, I will put the link to the article in the descriptions. And if I forget, let me know. But this is something kind of close to me. I've done a deep dive on this a couple of times. Uh, I had a very good friend, uh, one of my best friends, um, struggle with this, uh, going through transitioning. And from time to time, I've always wanted to get more information. You know, you love somebody, they, you know, your friend and stuff, and you want to learn more about it. I didn't want to be ignorant on the topic. And a lot of times when you're in the um, sphere of online websites and debates and things like that over the years, it comes up and you find yourself looking at issues like, you know, laws that are being passed about gender and um, transitioning people and so on and so forth. Even gay, lesbian, the LB, the whole thing. And I started wondering, you know, how much is it a mental issue for somebody? Is it a disorder? Uh, is it something that is, you know, cor cor is it a correctable thing? Is it something that people just, and I, I just didn't know in the beginning. And I don't know what to say, that's like seven years ago. And over my life, I've encountered people and had, you know, certain relationships with people that um, were flat out saying they had it or they didn't have it and it, it's a really kind of confusing subject in in most cases for most people that i know and you know i'm in brooklyn new york and well anyway so i've had a little bit of uh experience with this i've gone in and out over the years just trying to get a better understanding of it i've said this before but it's one thing to kind of know something and hear something and you think of it as, oh, you know, I know it. But, you know, getting an you know, informed opinion is so much better. So instead of thinking you know what this gender dysphoria is and blah, 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 I put out these podcasts and you can listen to it. Or you can just hit the link yourself and read it instead of hearing me flub words. In any case, I'll get to it right now. This is going to be from the National Library of Medicine. And it's... Um, like I said, I'll put the link in the description, and it's going to be gender dysphoria, and I'll begin now. Gender dysphoria, previously gender identity disorder, according to Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, are defined as a, quote, marked incongruence between their experienced or expressed gender and one they were assigned with, assigned at birth. People who experience this turmoil cannot correlate to their gender expression when identifying themselves within the traditional, rigid, societal, binary male or female rules, roles, which may cause cultural stigmatization. Yeah, tell me about it, right? Which is another thing, like, look, let people be who the fuck they want. Show me the fucking video footage and news article of a, a transgender man transitioning to a female shooting up schools. When does it fucking happen? It's so fucking sick of this bullshit because of people who are afraid of things they don't understand. I don't understand it either, so I did some deep dives on it. I just happened to, over my life, meet a couple of people here and there and then become really good friends who I love very much. And I got into it a little deeper. But, no. W who do people fucking in jail robbing and, and killing people? And it's, it's not fucking some guy wearing a wig pretending he's going to be a transitioning person. Is that one of the fears too? So this whole thing gets me upset in, in that sense. It's just bullshit. Oh boy. 
This can further result in relationship difficulties with family, peers, friends, and lead to interpersonal conflicts, rejection from society, symptoms of depression and anxiety, substance use disorders, a negative sense of well-being and poor self-esteem, and an increased risk of self-harm and suicide, suicidality. Is that a fucking word? I guess it is, because this is a legit site, right? I mean, all right. Patients with this condition should be provided with psychiatric support. Hormonal therapy and surgical therapy are also available depending on the individual case and patient needs. This activity describes the evaluation and management of gender dysphoria and reviews the role of the interprofessional team in providing care for those with this condition. All right, so it's got, this is more like an educational thing, uh, objectives, review the ideology of gender dysphoria, describe, outline the treatment, summarize. So we got the introduction. The origin of the word gender came from the old French gendre, now termed genre, <laughs> which, mean, which meant kind, sort, genius, or genus. Generally, children are assigned to their gender at birth based on the anatomy, and chromosomes. For most children, this gender assignment corresponds to their gender identity, an innate sense of identifying oneself as male or female. Some children might experience incongruity and grow into transgender adults. Gender dysphoria, what they call it GED, so in case I say that, according to the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Health, the DSM-5, is defined as a marked incongruence between the experience or expressed gender role and the one they were assigned with at birth. It was previously termed gender identity disorder. Children or adolescents who experience this turmoil cannot correlate to their gender expression when identifying themselves within traditional societal binary male or female roles, which may cause cultural stigmatization. stigmatization. This can further lead to relationship. I just fucking read this before. I guess I, I read the intro thing and increased risk of self-harm and suicidality. More awareness must be created to perceive gender expression as a continuum from male to female rather than fixed binary norms. This might help society to understand the population and reduce the burden of mental health problems created by the associated stigma. See? Right, at least I got to that because I was reading the fucking... All right, in any case, I like the... Um, Premise there is, is this, see, this is why I don't know enough, but is this is what someone would say, like, fluid, you know, a, a fluid, more fluid um, understanding of sexual identity? Because, I mean, I don't know, because I try to put myself in other people's shoes. Like, if I right now wanted to, you know, go and date a guy, and a masculine guy, which I have no interest in, would that mark me being mentally ill or have a disorder? Then... Do we say, oh, I'm 50 years old, I, I want to identify as a woman now. Is it a marked difference in my chemical brain thing? You know, in a sense, like, I don't care because I had this issue with my mom with um, going to have an operation. And, uh, like, I knew I can get the, oh, I, I didn't know. I, I thought I can get the doctors to perform the operation against her will because of her mental health condition. And I debated with this and struggled with this internally for a long, it seemed like millennia, I didn't have much time obviously, because it was a heart valve thing, and I determined that there's no way I would be 67, 70 years old and want to be told what the fuck to do, and it was almost as simple as that, like, alright mom this is what you should do, get this thing fixed, whatever, and you won't have any problems, and you know, like anything with an operation, and she didn't want to do it. Well, she wound up living another nine to fucking third, another nine to something years. And do I have regrets about it? Maybe in a, in a little recesses in my mind, but I, I, I make peace with that with my construct and all the things I do for my mental health, the, the tools I have or use. And it's, um, it's, it's difficult. And I think about it right now, like, are you telling me you made a pill that will take my friend's gender dysphoria and, and make it normal? Like, what does that mean? Does that mean that there is a problem or is that a societal genetic thing that, you know, how much do we know about this? And that's why I read these articles and I'll, I'll fucking continue. Um, 
Uh, the term gender should not be confused with sexual orientation. A transgender man, biological female, might identify himself as heterosexual and still be sexually attracted to a woman and vice versa. See, right there, like, okay, so you could be a transgender man, meaning you were born female, and still consider yourself heterosexual. Like, it's so nuanced. Like, I wish people would just get an informed opinion at least that the, the the topic highlights that your friend said or something you read real quick as a blurb anyway etiology the etiology of gender dysphoria gd remains unclear but it is thought to originate from a complex biophys bio okay here we go biopsychosocial link individuals born with congenital adrenal hypoplasia or andrian androgen insensitivity syndrome are usually brought up and socialized as girls even though they often cross-dress and have an innate sense of belonging to the opposite sex these changes are more evident around and during puberty this is one of the well-established biological links associations have also been found with the in utero explo uh, exposure exposure i would have fucking oh Fuck. There's a reason why I might stop doing this. I, just, I sometimes I can't focus. To uh, <laughs> associations have also been found with in utero exposure to phthalates and plastics and polychlorinated bio biofilms. <laughs> oh God! They also known to disrupt the regular endocrinology of sex determination before birth. Phthaliates <laughs> can lead to an increase in total fetal testosterone levels, which in turn increases the risk of autism spectrum disorder as well as GD. GD has been found to have higher prevalence in people with psychiatric illnesses such as schizophrenia and autism spectrum disorder. The link seems to be neuroanatomical and needs more research. There was a growing evidence that autistic population had a higher risk of GD, however, Certain studies seem to disprove this hypothesis. There is also a growing evidence that childhood abuse, neglect, maltreatment, and physical or sexual abuse may be associated with GD. Individuals reporting higher body dissatisfaction and GD have a worse prognosis in terms of mental health. And as mentioned above in epidemiology, individuals with GD are, full, are found to have higher rates of depression, suicidal ideations, and substance abuse. Neuroanatomical links have been found in certain studies. A major one is uh, faulty neuro neuronal development and differentiation in the hypothalamic links. Functioning neuroimaging has shown variations in hemispheric ratios and amygdala Connectivity according to gender. <laughs> By the way, this fucking term here, I mean, Gadala is like uh, wrestling. I could see the Gorilla Monsoon mentioning it. That's just a silly thing because I'm fucking struggling to do these things. I'm telling you. A few case reports have reported one some association of GD to maternal toxoplasma infection although additional data is needed for further evidence. A genetic association is also identified as one of the causes of GD. Heritability and familiarity of GD have been identified. For instance, higher prevalence in monozygotic twins than in dizygotic twins. Some athletes, CYP17 and CYP17-T-34C have also been found to have an association, although it is difficult to say if it is merely association or causation. There's plenty of links, little things here to hit to get deeper dives because God, I'm murdering the words in this article. Epidemiology. According to a sexual health study published in 2017, there is a markedly high prevalence ranging from 0.5% to 1.3% for self-reported transgender identity in children, adolescents, and adults. It was traditionally a rare or uncommon diagnosis. 
However, the numbers have increased in the past few decades. According to analysis of national probability samples in 2016, 390 per 100,000 adults were transgender. However, it also suggested that future surveys will probably observe a higher prevalence. According to a recent national survey, 1.4 million individuals, 0.6%, in the United States identify as transgender. It is also believed that these numbers are misrepresented due to social stigma. Hello? Also, a part of this population might not want to engage in studies. Hence, the true prevalence remains higher than what is reported. Nevertheless, an increasing shift has been observed in this population seeking health care over the last decade. Substance use disorders are commonly found in men and women with GD, with some studies showing 28% having reported problems with substance use. You know, yeah, I, I guess so, but you know, that's just everything these days, isn't it? Everything makes everybody go substance use. Your coffee, your fucking beer, like... Uh, this is fucking... Anyway. In a recent study, about 48.3% of the study population had suicidal ideation, and 23.8% had attempted suicide at least once in their lifetime. But people know how fucking deep that is, like... Come on, this is like, people are struggling in this world. We don't, like, need more stigma for this shit. In a recent study, about 48.3% of the study population had suicidal ideation. And 238 had attempted suicide at least once in their lifetime. You people ever fucking meet somebody who has still suicidal ide- like ideas? Who once in a while just lose it and are at the bottom, it seems, and just don't see any way out except death. Fucking people just go through life, like, ignoring shit. Anyway, again, another thing that gets me mad. Although they were not able to appreciate any clinically significant difference between male to female or female to male groups, anxiety, depression, and personality disorders are also common comorbidities. Comorbidities. One study in Medu in 2009 found that personality disorder was comorbid in 52% of cases and the most common was cluster B personality disorder. Hmm. And that's another factor in, the, you know, personality disorder. I got, but anyway, I'll continue. Pathopsychology. Biological factors. Biological understanding and genetic contributions to gender dysphoria might allow all domains, like social and medical, to have a greater acceptance of gender dysphoria. There have been several hypothetical populates, however, it is still not well understood. In the 1970s, it was populated, oh, postulated, okay, postulated, that the development of GD is entirely a learned environmental pathology, and the approach was aimed at adopting conversion and aversion behavior techniques to criticize feminine characteristics in young boys. It is suggested that many genes contribute to making gender identity an inherited, complex, multifactorial, polygenetic trait. (laughs) I got fucking mad, by the way. I get fucking mad. I can't control certain things anymore. This is pissing me off. You know, here they're talking about adopting conversion and aversion behavior techniques to criticize in young boys. Like, yeah, you know, you know what that fucking means for the general populace? That means like beating the shit out of people because you don't fucking like them. They, you, you can't find you, something wrong in you. Wow, oh, fucking bullshit. All right, so what did I fuck up on? Yeah, let's do it again. Why not? It is suggested that many genes contribute to making gender identity an inherited, complex, multifactorial, polygenetic trait. However, it does not necessarily determine complex traits. It is now believed that gender is not dichotomously branched and it is actually a spectrum of the cisgender and transgender umbrella. Multiple family and twin-based hereditability studies have provided evidence for the polygenetic genetic inheritance of GD. Molecular genetic studies to date have no conclusive evidence of any gene identified for GD. 
Gender dysphoria cannot be pres uh oh, sorry. Gender dysphoria can be present in congenital adrenal hypoplasia or partial androgen din androgen insensitivity syndrome and DSM five recognizes this as a specifier. Psychosocial factors. The development of gender to its assigned sex in children may be influenced by interaction with children's temperament, appearance, qualities, and the dynamic relationship. Young boys are not expected to be effeminate, and young girls are expected to be nurtur uh, nurturing, warm, and sensitive. These behaviors are also congruent with cultural norms. Children usually start identifying gender between three and five years of age, although there might be discrepancies. Cross-gender activities are, serif, are carefully studied in children with GD. They have been increasingly incongruent in the past few de decades. Renowned psychologist, oh, renowned psychoanalyst Sigmund Freud emphasized that gender dysphoria arises in children from oedipal triangle conflicts. <laughs> Oedipo, you know, you know the fucking word, right? God, man. History and the physical. Patients with gender dysphoria, GD, can present to their primary care physician, endocrinologist, or mental health providers. Sometimes it is a primary concern, whereas others might present with compound mental health problems. Yeah. Also, due to greater exposure, social acceptance, and greater access to care, this population tends to present before puberty. Whereas before, they might have presented in adulthood or late adolescence. Necessary referrals should be made according to the patient provided them with strong support system. And I guess that's a way of looking at it and saying um, we're on a good trend or something, I guess, right? Like, it's with things becoming, you know, social norms and stuff where we're finding it earlier or at least helping people earlier. And there is a big debate about children and hormone blockers and this and that. But when I look at it in just with my semi-informed opinion, right? I'm, I'm not an expert in this. I have no fucking degrees. I've said this before. I just like to do deep dives. And when I do say a deep dive, I sometimes consider it like a college course. So if it's something I look at a couple times a week, but I'll do it over, you know, a three-month period, a six-month period, so on and so forth. And um, I'm just wondering if these, you know, things were really helping people in that sense. But the thing with children is, for me, if you're telling me the numbers are preventing massive amounts of suicides, I, I just don't know if, it, if, if that's what you should do. Now, if you want to get into the nuanced thing, well, the kid wants to do it and the parents don't, I don't know what to say there. I'm not a parent. But if you're telling me that... The children and their parents are interested in looking at hormonal therapy for a young child, and like I'm not, I still don't know what all the factors. Sure, but I'm going to err on that side. Like I want these people alive. I don't want them. You know, what? There's, there's almost nothing you can do. I know what I fucking did in Brooklyn, New York, from 12 years old to like 16. When I should have been in school and should have been fucking whatever and faking it to everybody because I noticed my mom had mental issues and I was fucking losing it in a sense. Like, I know where I was. I know what the fucking things I did. And sometimes I'm lucky to be alive. So, you can help these children in some cases do it. I'm fucking sick of seeing suicide things and stuff like that. All right, and it is essential to obtain a good history from the patient, including psychiatric substance use, social family, and development, including any history of trauma. Past psychiatric history would include past suicide attempts, self-injurious behavior, and history of previous inpatient psychiatric condition. If they currently have a psychiatrist or a psychotherapist, any past psychiatric treatment. Social and developmental history includes their childhood, education status, Academic performance, social support, history of trauma, mental, physical, sexual, legal history, and whether they are currently married or have children. Family history includes any history of psychiatric illness, completed suicides, or substance use. 
completed suicides. I don't know if I fucking ever seen that term, and I've done these things quite a lot. I don't know, it just struck me. Physical examinations. At birth, a thorough general exam should be carried out. Children born with congenital adrenal hyperplasia or androgen insensitivity syndrome can present with ambiguous genitalia. Congenital adrenal hypothasia may be prevent may present may may present with early signs of dehydration, hypo natremia and hyperkalemia you know when i fucking look at these things and i glance through them and i go through them and i pick which one i'm going to use maybe i should start looking at ones that i can't fucking that i don't think i could read i hope someone's having fun or something because hyperkalemia and hyper hyponatremia you know like dehydration i get right so that's simple in the late onset subtype, they might be present with early signs of virilization and menstrual irregularities in young females. Classic salt losing type individuals are sicker and need immediate management. Classic salt losing type individuals. What the fuck does that mean? I got, you know, I, now I see this is what I do. Sometimes I'll just fucking, I'll just have to do it. Classic salt losing type individuals. This is like insane. I know, I know I'm fucking this. This podcast is going to be fucking. This is what's going on. And the more and more I do these, the more I don't know. I just start fucking losing my focus and, you know, figuring out how to stay on target. But this is, is mind boggling to me. Because I'm fucking Googling it while, like, while I'm doing this. And I should be, you know, edit, thinking of editing stuff. I don't give a fuck no more. Like, I don't. So. And, of course, because I have 80 fucking things open. Nothing is working, so. Uh, <laughs> Alright, well, the salt losing type is regarded as the classic and most severe form of 21 hydroglaze deficiency in which... Cortisol production is virtually absent, and the aldosterone production is diminished, leading to salt wasting, failure to thrive, and potentially fatal. All right, well, there you go. Well, I learned something, right? There you go. <sighs> Androgenin sensitivity syndrome is when genetic genetic males are in, sensitive to androgens in the body. They are often raised as girls. They may have hormonal and surgical treatments in early adulthood adolescence. Careful and meticulous assessment and genetic testing should be performed on individuals born with ambiguous genitalia. By the way, there's fucking tons of shit about botched operations like in what and there are fucking studies they've done. It's heartbreaking sometimes, like and I wish people would just understand that. Like we're all fucking humans, like Oh boy, alright, what is this now? Evaluation, di diagnostic, uh, diagnosis, uh, no, fucking cares now. Gender dysphoria in children. A marked incongruence between one sexual experience of first gender and assigned gender of at least six months duration. As manifested, but at least six of the following must be criteria. Alright, so this is diagnosis, gender dysphoria, dysphoria in children. Uh, a strong desire to be of the uh, other gender and an insistence that they are the other gender. Uh, in boys, assigned gender, a strong preference for cross-dressing or simulating female attire. Or in girls, a strong preference for wearing only uh, assigned gender. A strong preference in wearing only typical masculine clothing and strong resistance to wearing typical feminine clothing. Three, a strong preference for the cross-gender roles in make-believe play or fantasy play. A strong preference for the toys, games, or activities stereotypically used or engaged in by other gender. A strong preference for playmates of the other gender. In boys assigned gender, a strong rejection of typically masculine toys, games, activities, and a strong avoidance of rough and tumble play. Or in girls assigned gender, a strong rejection of typical feminine toys, games, and activities. 7. A strong dislike of one's sexual anatomy. B. Uh, 8. 
a strong desire for the primary and or secondary sex characteristics matching one's experienced gender. And is B, the condition is associated with clinically significant distress or impairment in social, school, and other important areas of functioning. Specifically, if the above criteria are in addition to a disorder of sex development, e.g. a congenital adrenal disorder such as congenital adrenal hypothasia or androgen sensitivity disorder, for fuck's sake! <sighs> Gender dysphoria in adolescents and adults. A, a marked incongruence between one's expressed gender and assigned gender of at least six months duration are manifested by at least two of the following. Marked incongruence between experience of the uh, yeah, uh-huh, sexual uh, uh, secondary characteristics. Uh, a strong desire to be rid of one's primary or secondary sex characteristics because of a marked incongruence with one's experience expressed gender. Or in young adolescents, a desire to prevent the development of the anticipated secondary sex characteristics. Three, a strong desire for the primary and or secondary sex characteristics of the other gender. Four, a strong desire to be of the other gender or some alternative gender different from one's assigned gender. A strong desire to be treated as the other gender or some alternative gender different from one's assigned gender. Six, a strong conviction that one has the typical feelings and reactions of the other gender or some alternative gender different from one's assigned gender. Now, these fucking parentheses that I... This is like because of fucking... The terms and shit that are used, like, and people, I used to see this argument a lot, like, oh, you know, they should be, yeah, you know what, transgender, gay people, they all should be treated differently. But the reason why you see them screaming and, and trying to get laws and stuff is because of assholes. Yeah, if it was a nice, perfect world, it would just be an understanding or the yuck factor, I like to say. Okay, like, oh, I don't like this. Okay, whatever. But no, there's a fucking... I don't know if you want to call them the biblical fucking whatever or a certain mindset that just wants to, you know, worsen the stigma of this fucking bullshit. Just let people go to their doctors, do what they want to do. And, you know, like anything with people, with parents and children, like you get an informed opinion, you get second opinions, third opinions if you have to. But no, we've got to like make it so that you can't use certain bathrooms and stuff like just... Stop the bullshit. Anyway. B. The condition is associated with clinically significant distress or impairment in social, occupational, or other important areas of functioning. Specify. Whether a disorder of sexual development exists, e.g. congenital adrenogenital disorder, such as oh God, congenital adrenal adrenal Hypoplasia or androgen insensitivity syndrome. Just fuck off. You see, why can't they give me those ADY? I can't, right? No. Everywhere else it is. But I gotta fucking say these things. Congenital, congenital, adrenogenital disorder. Congenital adrenal hypoplasia. Post transition, the individual has transitioned to the full time living in the desired gender, with or without legalization of gender change, and has undergone or is preparing to have at least one cross sex medical procedure or treatment regimen, namely regular cross sex hormone treatment or gender reassignment surgery, confirming the desired gender. Uh, E.g., pin- pinectomy. pinectomy vaginoplasty and natal male mastectomy or phalloplasty in a natal female. Other specified gender dysphoria. This category applies to presentations in which symptoms, characteristics of gender dysphoria that cause clinically significant distress or impairment in social, occupational, or important areas of functioning predominate but do not meet the full criteria for gender dysphoria. The other specified gender dysphoria category is used in situations in which the clinician clinician chooses to communicate the specific reason that the presentation does not meet the criteria for gender dysphoria. This is done by recording other specific gender dysphoria followed by the specific reason, e.g. brief gender dysphoria. Unspecified gender dysphoria. 
This category applies to presentations in which symptoms, characteristics, or gender dysphoria that cause clinically significant distress or impairment of social functioning or epidemic, but do not meet the full criteria of gender dysphoria. The unspecified gender dysphoria category is used in situations... Yeah, fucking... Oh, my God. Treatment management. Patients can present to their primary care providers, endocrinologists, and mental health care providers. Sometimes it is a primary concern, whereas others it might present with confounded mental health problems. Also, due to greater exposure, social acceptance, and greater access, this population tends to present earlier before puberty. Unlike before, when they may present in adulthood. Yeah, I've read this before, right? Okay, well, I'm just going to go. Necessary referrals should be made according to the patient to give them a more robust support system. It should also be specified according to age, SADC et al. What the f- Okay, suggest so the following. Individual, family, and group therapy are important for children to explore and counsel on gender preference. For adolescents, the added anticipation of puberty is a concern. So hormonal treatment and psychotherapy should be considered simultaneously. For adults, psychotherapy and hormonal and surgical treatments are all available options. All right? This is another thing. Like I said, my brain is not functioning right. These, and it's just, um, I fucking lose it sometimes. But this is important for me. Um, for adolescents, to, you know, the anticipation of puberty is of concern. So hormonal treatment and psychotherapy should be considered simultaneously. So, yeah. If you know, doctors are saying it should, it should be considered. Uh, adequate counseling is necessary for this population before starting treatment. One, a care team and comprehensive approach with an endocrinologist and mental health care provider should be made available. Expectations, transgender, hormonal, and surgical treatment options will help address the patient's external appearance to be in congruence with the gender identity. Unrealistic expectations should be addressed adequately. A supportive network of peers, friends, and family is often helpful. Risks and benefits of treatment. Both hormonal and surgical therapies accompany significant risk. Uh, Venous thrombolism, bone mineral density, and pubital suppression. Fertility prevention. Before initiating hormonal and surgical treatment, the patient might lose the ability to reproduce. So it is important to discuss fertility Preservation by freezing the individual's gametes. Five, uh, sexual health. Incidence of sexually transmitted infections in HIV was higher in this population. Also, the practitioner must understand that even with a standardized protocol in place, the approach needs to be individualized to ensure a good prognosis post-treatment. The World Professional Association for Transgender Health, WPATH, currently publishes the standards care, standards of care (SOC) to provide clinical guidelines for the health care of transsexual, transgender, and gender non-conforming persons in order to maximize the health and well-being of patients with gender dysphoria. Yeah, let's give these people a fucking hand. The World Professional Association for Transgender, the WPATH, and they have the published the standards of care. All treatment options should be offered, and depending on an individual's goals and expectations, the most appropriate surgical technique should be performed. The standards of care outlined by WPATH recommends against physical interventions before age 16. They recommend that surgery only be performed after age 18, and after the individual has lived in their desired gender role for at least two years, for people to undergo physical, hormonal, or surgical interventions to make their body more in line with their gender identity. You must be assessed by a mental health professional with special competence in this area, and often recommendations are required from two such mental health professionals. So you see, this isn't people willy-nilly running out. Like like I said before, I'm 52. I, I, if I want to be a fucking female and I want to, uh, you know, game the system, I, I'm gonna. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna go out dressed like a fucking girl. I'm a cross dresser. Oh no, wait. Do I get boob implants or I get you know? Uh, surgical operations like people don't do this for fucking willy-nilly reasons like and just to fucking do some <clears throat> sick shit because that's what the fucking that's what the the true line is and fucking news no people go to fucking doctors and they go get get help they're looking for help they want to be helped 
and blah. Uh, hormonal therapy. The aim to suppress the internally produced hormones to administer and maintain cross sex hormones in their phys physiological range. There has been a great push to start hormonal therapy in these patients before they hit puberty, but it is still under research and ethical issues persist. Criteria for starting treatment. Persistent and well-documented gender dysphoria. Capacity to counsel for the treatment. Mental or medical underlying issues are in control. Transgender women. The desired goals are to eliminate facial hair, introduction of breast formation, and female body contour. There can be a combination of anti-androgenins, uh, spiro and uh, lactone, Progestins, metal drugs, or progesterone. <laughs> I gotta fucking end this, right? I can't. I don't know how long I've been doing this. My fucking brain is hurting. Um, associated with excess cardiovascular and breast cancer risk in older women taking conjugated estrogen. G. Oh, this is easy. Uh, G N R H and Godist long acting. Gondotropin releasing hormone suppresses testosterone. Phenesteride, phenesteride, and estrogen 17 beta estradiol. Estradiol. The goal of treatment is to avoid serocyologic. Jesus Christ. Serocyological. Doses of blood levels of estrogen to avoid adverse effects. The most common adverse effects of estrogen therapy include thrombolic disease, liver dysfunction, hypertrigliceridemia, macroproclamatinoma. <laughs> oh, due to impact of lactoprophyl, right? Lactotroph. Coronary artery disease. Cerebrovascular disease and hypertension. For fuck's sake! It is. I'm gonna mad now because my friend, who uh, is not my friend no more, really not on my part because you know, they lost their fucking minds. It's like technically. Um, I wish you know I could fucking talk and go over this with them. Oh my god, this is one of the worst things I've ever done in that sense. Counseling should be provided against cigarette smoking, specifically to those on estrogens. Estradiol levels, testosterone level, blood pressure, cholesterol, panel, prolactin, and liver function should be routinely monitored. Clinical and laboratory evaluation is recommended every three months. During the first year of hormonal therapy for transgender females and then once or twice yearly. Speech voice therapy can be offered to all transgender females. Different methods can be used, including professional techniques for vocal training. Speech therapy by trained speech pathologists. I said that right. All right, pathologists, or even surgeries. Having voice and speech characteristics in agreement with one's gender identity is often important to transgender individuals. Transgender men. <clears throat> the primary treatment measure is testosterone injectables, usually scheduled once weekly. The oral route is not recommended due to the first pass through the intestines liver. During the first few months, increased muscle mass, acne, and libido are seen along with the cessation of menses, eventually more permanent changes such as the deepening of the voice and the enlarged clitoris occurring following three to six months of therapy. Routine monitoring of hemoglobin, hemocrit, liver function, cholesterol, and screening for diabetes should be done. As per endocrine, endocrine society guidelines 2017, Hematocrit or hemoglobin needs to be measured at baseline every three months for the first year and then one to two times a year. The goal is to maintain the testosterone levels in the psychological normal, oh, psychologic, physiologic, normal male range and avoid the adverse effects resulting from excess testosterone therapy, particularly anthrocrisis. Uh, shit. I don't know. Erythrocalitosis, sleep, apnea, hypertension, excessive weight gain, salt retention, 
lipid changes and excessive or cystic acne. Measuring BMD and screening for osteoporosis, osteoporosis is essential, especially in patients who are not compliant at higher risk for bone loss. Providers in this area of care encourage to start hormonal therapy before puberty with maximum results and patient satisfaction. However, parental consent for children and young adolescents for initiating hormonal therapy remains contro- controversial. The physician should inform the patient that testosterone is terogenetic, ter- tetrogen- tetrogenic. Contraceptive methods, including IUDs, etc., should be discussed with the patients. Surgical therapy. The, criteri- the criterium is needed. So I'm going to tell you what the fucking problem is, okay? I don't like doing fucking articles where it's an opinion piece. I like to do abstract science stuff, and I get fucked. Because I don't know how old, long this one is, but I've been flubbing way too many words. But I don't care in that sense. The criteria needed in addition to those listed above for initiating hormonal treatment before opting for surgical treatment. The individual should be one should be on one year of continuous hormone therapy and living in the desired role. This is often the last step in the treatment process. The counseling discussed above should be continued for these patients. And unrealistic expectations should be addressed, since these are often irreversible procedures. Good insight and counseling, along with social support, are required to predict a favorable outcome. These surgeries are often referred to as top surgery or bottom surgery. For MTF, male to female, breast augmentation is common top surgery, that trans women desire also gonadot- gonadotomy, including penoc- penectomy and vaginoplasty. It's desired to remove the primary source of testosterone from the body. Vaginal dilators are often routinely used to maintain anatomy of sexual intercourse as a goal. For FTM, female to male, uh, metoidioplasty, where the clitoris is released from the ligament attached to Issues added to increase length of the girth, uh, scrotoplasty, um, and testicular implants, and phalloplasty, penile implants are also methods. However, the expense involved is, is significant, and the ex- expertise required for these surgeries is not very common. Yeah, I'll make it cheaper and get more people to fucking do it. There you go. Give them incentives. In the end, the constant, uh, constant and continued support from the family, community, and peers predict favorable outcomes, even after seeking medical and mental health treatment. Individual and group therapy should be continued. Confounding substance use problems should be addressed. Differential diagnosis, uh, autogenophilia, body dysmorphic disorder, gynomadromorphophilia, intersex states, psychosis, paraphilic disorders, self-amputation, schizophrenia, Transvestism. <clears throat> Enhancing healthcare team outcomes. Any mental health illness requires targeting the biological, psychological, and social aspects of the patient to have the most favorable outcome. And that's really what this whole fucking article is about for me, what my whole podcast is about, so I'll repeat it again. Any mental health illness requires targeting the biological, psych- psychological, and social aspects of the patient to have the most favorable outcome. Alright, so let's set that settle in. One, creating more awareness about individuals with gender dysphoria and validating the concerns of this vulnerable population requires more active parental and peer support. Understanding gender on a scale that is not as binary forms can help reduce the stigma in seeking timely help to improve prognosis and outcome. Open discussions and mass level education in school and work environments can help achieve this. Well, guess what? That's what they're trying to fucking stop. They don't want this shit in school. Because these fucking asshat, whatever you want to call them, certain brain, right wing, whatever the fuck, and left wing, they're all just just this fucking bullshit. So let's get on this. Let's go. To create more awareness for gender dysphoria among physicians and other healthcare providers and to encourage providers to be more forthcoming, forthcoming and liberal in providing care and treating for this population. To emphasize an interprofessional team approach that is already in effect. This gives our patients the opportunity to get treatment within the same loop of providers. Also, understand that this population has a higher incidence of psychiatric illnesses. 
con concomitant substance abuse and, and personality disorders that can be challenging. <clears throat> yeah, hello. Along with this innate, oh, that's just number, that was two, this is three. Along with this innate sense of rejection, desire to be opposite sex, these patients need treatment with hormones and therapy. These patients should also be screened for mental health problems like depression, anxiety, safety risk assessments, and substance use during all office visits, including those to primary care providers, psychiatrists, psychologists, social workers, and endocriminologists to make necessary referrals in case a patient screens positive. Four, by understanding gender dysphoria as an organic pathology as suggested by available data and not entirely behavioral as it was previously thought to be. We can try to maximize care and improve outcomes. Five, as discussed above, the plan should always be individualized, even having protocols written to provide care for these patients. Holy shit, I think I'm done. This was a fucking nightmare. A literal nightmare. I did a first batch and I was feeling fucking pretty good. I started on my second batch because I should have fucking done them all at once. You know, knowing I was getting towards my end of capability to do these fucking podcasts. But here I am on my second batch and holy shit. I want to do good. I want to do something good for gender dysphoria and people with this. And I hope I did. If me murdering the language, maybe it is an indication that, you know, I should just fucking know my role and read a fucking article, opinion piece on it. And maybe I can attach that or do something, but holy shit, I hope this was helpful. I, my heart goes out to people in all categories, any mental disorder, illness. Let's be open-minded. Let's get it out there in the masses. If people want to come forward, they want to have doctors that they are familiar with and that treat them properly. Friends and family and co-workers that can at least understand what they're going through. You don't have to be a doctor, but you could read a fucking article. You could listen to me flub every fucking goddamn word in this whole fucking article. I use the F word constantly. Because I got my own fucking mental disorder, illnesses, and whatever. And they're really fucking with me lately. And I wish I this is something that is helpful, so... Here's my thing on gender dysphoria. I'll put the uh, link in the National Library of Medicine. Holy shit, I should have fucking just did something else. But anyway, there are links to here. The highlighted things, blue underlying things. You'll get a more deep dive. I hope this was helpful. I really want to put it out there. My heart goes out. Anybody wants to talk to me about anything, I don't care what it is at this point in my life. It's, you need a friend. You need someone to listen to. I don't give a fuck. I don't get angry or hold on to things, and despite what some people might fucking think, I don't, I'm more concerned with loving humanity and, you know, helping people get through this fucking life that is just constantly, you know, at, at odds with you. And maybe that's the way it should be, you know, life needs struggle and stuff, I get it, but can we make it at least, you know, we get a common call to go to the gym, we work out. All these things are okay, but the second you go to get mental health issues, you know, oh no, that's, a, and then you go to, you know, you're worried about your gender and you're expressing, you know, you're trapped in the wrong body and stuff. Let's be open-minded, let's be understanding. And then the road to that is reading a fucking, or maybe you should just read an, uh, 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 you know, an opinion piece on it at least. But in my days of learning this shit, you'd have to do it properly in my opinion, because you don't want to do the, the problems with gender reassessment, assignment, surgeries, right? Because then what you're going to find are the problems on that. So my always recommended a neutral gender dysphoria, boom, and then you can do the negative effects and the positive effects, right? So you want to get the whole gambit, and you want to see which ones lead to legitimate articles and legitimate studies. It's just way too prevalent to hear the bullshit, even from friends and stuff and people you know, that are in your, you know, life and, and not really friendship ways, but, you know, you go to work and you, you see, you go to the store, you see the same people. And in any case, I hope this was helpful in some way, despite me flubbing every fucking thing. My best to everybody out there. Um, I love you all, despite any fucking issues we had or you had. I'm here the second you need me. Reach out to me in some way. 
Uh, you can see my shit here. You can leave a message, private message me if you know me on Facebook, whatever, Twitter, uh, most social media. I'm Addiction Master. And um, my best to you and yours. I'll talk to you all next time. Take care.